everyone and welcome back to another mobile filmmaking tutorial. I know that most of you guys watching this video right now carry a smartphone with you. Well guess what, you can create awesome things with it. You now have the advantage to create a masterpiece right there on your smartphone and the good news is you don't even have to spend money on expensive camera gear to create good videos. With that said, let me show you how to film and edit on your iPhone so that you can get the best results for your video. Should I bring back that intro? Hell yeah. For the filming part, I will be filming myself without any help using the iPhone 11 Pro standard camera. I will be using this inexpensive uh, tripod. This way I can get interesting angles of myself. By the way, if you're interested in the mobile gear I use, I will leave links to it in the video description below. I think filming yourself is the best way to learn filmmaking fast. It's a tedious process because you have to set up the shot and be in it. It also makes it difficult to compose your shot nicely since you can't really see yourself while filming, but it's definitely possible with a few tips and tricks that I will give you in this video. So I will go through a few basics first before we get into the behind the scene. In the end, I will show you how to edit the video using the free version of InShot, which you can download on your iPhone or Android phone. So that you know, this video is divided into eight parts. We're gonna talk about uh, location, storyline, camera settings, focus and exposure, composition, movement, behind the scene, and editing. So with that said, let's get into the video. So starting off with the location, it's important to consider when picking your location is that it matches with your story. Choose a place that helps tell the story. Also think of the time of day you are shooting because that can really change the suitability of your location. I picked the day where the sun is not too high above. It's actually a cloudy day, which is also beneficial. This way the light will be softer, resulting in less harsh shadows, giving you a more pleasing look. So try to avoid shooting during midday or pick an overcast day to really get better result. Unless you're going for that harsh look like in Western movies. So if you have to shoot during midday but want a softer lighting, then look for fully shaded areas, maybe behind trees or uh, behind a building where there is a shadow. So moving on to storyline, for this video, we're going to have a vague storyline. It's important to have some kind of story in your mind. I will start out from this spot. I will then get shots of me walking through the area, observing the place and crossing the bridge. In the end, I will be arriving at an interesting spot where I'll be filming most of my B-rolls. I will then put down my camera bag, grab my camera and take photos of the environment. So with this story in mind, I sort of know what shots I need. This is helpful because you don't want to just capture random things. When shooting videos, you don't always want to shoot from eye level since we see the world like that anyway. Really take the extra step to find interesting angles to make the video look more interesting. Maybe go a little bit lower or get on top of a rock to have an angle above. Really keep your eyes open for unique angles and doing so will definitely enhance the story you're trying to tell. So the process of how I do this is that I film a sequence from multiple angles. This way I have more option in post to cut the story. I usually start off with an establishing shot to give the viewer an idea of where the scene is taking place. I will also be taking medium shots that will help tell the story. These shots will mostly be static uh, because my smartphone will be on a tripod most of the time. And of course I will add some nice detail or close-up shots to add more emotion into my story. Camera settings. We will be working with the standard camera of the iPhone because I want to keep it as simple and easy as possible for you guys. But if you are interested in using an advanced camera app like Filmic Pro where you have full control over your camera, then I highly recommend you check out this video where I explain how it works in detail. So the camera settings I will be using is 4K 60 frames per second. 4K has more detail and allows me to crop in. And this is really important since I'm filming myself and therefore might not get the framing right. 
all the time. If you don't have 4K 60 frames per second, you can also go with 1080p 60 frames per second, but keep in mind that you won't have the flexibility to crop in that much, so be careful with that. Make sure to enable grid line so that you can set your composition correctly. Speaking of composition, the rule of thirds is one of the basic rules and easiest to get started with to create a strong balanced image. You simply want to enable grid lines and place your subject on one of the four intersection points. Avoid placing your subject in the box like now. Although placing your subject in the middle can create a strong composition, doing it too often can make the shot look very boring. Keep in mind that you don't always have to use the rule of thirds. It's really here to guide you to create a dynamic composition in your video. Another important part of composition is that you have a strong foreground, midground, and background to add a sense of depth into your scene. Think of it as layers. In terms of shallow depth of field, you won't get that much on a smartphone, meaning that the subject is in focus and the background is out of focus. Now there is a way to achieve a really shallow depth of field on your smartphone is to get really close onto your subject. That would work. Focus and exposure. The video option on an iPhone are somewhat limited compared to a video app like Filmic Pro, but the small amount of adjustments that you can make on your iPhone's camera will still enable you to do important things. Now setting focus is pretty easy on an iPhone. Just tap where you want to set the focus and it will automatically do it for you. To get a little bit more advanced, I like using the AE and AF lock for locking focus and exposure. AE stands for auto exposure and AF for auto focus. Keep in mind that you can't separate these two. For that, you would need an advanced camera app, but for what we're using it for right now, this should be enough. Now let me show you how you can lock your focus. Frame the subject and tap the screen to select your focus point. Hold your fingers down on your focus point for a couple of seconds and a small yellow box will start to flash with AE, AF lock appearing. Your focus is now locked. If you reframe to something else, you will see that it's out of focus. To release it, tap elsewhere. To lock your exposure, again, you want to frame the scene and tap on the area of the image that you wish to auto expose correctly. You should now see that the brightness of the image has been adjusted to the point that you have selected. You should be having a perfectly exposed image now. If you reframe to a brighter area, you will see that the exposure won't change. Another useful feature that is important to know is to manually set your exposure. This comes in handy if you want to reduce noise or simply want to correct your exposure because you're unhappy with the auto correction that has been made on your smartphone. So to manually adjust your exposure, tap on the iPhone screen on the point of focus. You will see a yellow box appear with the sun icon. Move your finger up or down the screen to brighten or darken the exposure. All right, let's move on to movement. Most smartphones have optical image stabilization that will compensate for the hand movement. To even get smoother shots, make sure to have your knees slightly bent and your feet roll when walking. Also hold your iPhone with both hands and keep whenever possible close to your chest. Really move with your whole body instead of using just your arms. Because we're recording in slow motion, this will also help make the video look more smoother. Now I prefer using a gimbal because it allows me to be more flexible and I can really create dynamic shots with it. But since I want to keep this video low budget, I will just be using my tripod and some handheld movements. So I hope you digested all of that information. Now we're gonna get into the behind the scene and shoot the video. So we're gonna start off here with our establishing shot. And what I'm gonna do is pull the camera upwards uh, to reveal uh, the nature's beauty. So I'm gonna set the focus first and then lock it. And then I'm gonna create this revealing shot. So there's a nice reflection going on here and I think this is gonna look great for a nice close-up. So I'm gonna use the tele lens for that. I'm gonna set the focus on the reflection, lock it and action. All right, so I set my tripod over here. Uh, I'm gonna get a medium shot of myself walking over that bridge. I have some nice foreground uh, with this tree um, and I'm gonna set my focus on the bridge and then lock it and I'm gonna push down the exposure just a little bit 
and I'm gonna start recording. So I think this shot would look great because of the leading lines, uh, giving it a nice symmetry. So I'm gonna set the exposure on the sky to preserve those highlights and lock it. So let's test it out. So for this shot, I'm gonna use the tripod to film myself and create some movement in it. So I'm gonna switch to the front facing camera so that I can see myself. And just as I gaze at the leaves, I just turn the tripod around me. And I think that's gonna look great. So let's try it. So I'm gonna film myself walking. I'm gonna use the tripod again and put it upside down and angle it so that my shoes are in the frame. And for that, I'm gonna use the ultra wide lens. So let's go. So I think this would be an interesting angle as well. As I said before, I want to get for every sequence different angles. So I have a little bit of foreground, these leaves, and uh, I'm gonna walk across the bridge again. And this is gonna create a really dynamic shot. Start recording. So now I'm gonna get a shot of this tall tree, also because of this leading line and I'm gonna film it like this in a circular motion using the ultra wide lens. Let's see how this looks like. The next shot will be from a different angle, like a continuous shot of the previous video. And again, I have some leaves here in the shot and I'm just gonna walk across the bridge again along this path, start recording. And of course there is also some acting involved. So the camera is hidden between the trees and uh, this is a different angle uh, that I want to get. Again, me walking this path so I can create a dynamic shot. Press the video and we can get started. So this is the part where I walk towards the bench and take off my bag, pull out the camera and take pictures of the city. So I'm gonna set the focus on the bench and lock it and start recording. Oh, and one important note is that you don't want to have the trash can in your frame. So I'm gonna get a close up of my bag. Uh, I'm gonna use the tele lens and I set the focus on my bag. This way I can create some nice shallow depth of field. So let's see how this will look like. So the next shot will also be a detailed shot where I grab out my camera, but I don't have my second camera with me. I'm actually gonna use this one. So you guys won't really see the behind the scene. So sorry about that. So after grabbing the camera, I will get a medium shot of myself. I'm gonna use the front facing camera so that I can set the focus on the sky. Um, and preserve the highlights. And I'm just gonna lift up the camera and then take a shot of the city. So the last shot is gonna be a sort of POV shot where I uh, put the camera back into the bag and I sort of close my bag and then fade into black. I already have a shot taking out the camera. I'm just gonna reverse that clip in post and yeah, I think it's gonna look great.
So let's start and I'm going to use the ultra wide angle for this one. Yep. That's going to be our ending. All right, guys, so I actually already finished editing the video. We're going to use the InShot app and it's actually a really simple video editing application that is almost self-explanatory, but I'm going to walk you step by step through it and also show you some advanced features that you can apply for your video to make it look even better. So make sure to download the InShot app and we can get started. All right, so open up the InShot app and we have video, photo and collage. We're obviously going to work with videos, so select that. As I said before, I already edited the video, so it saved it as a draft. It does that automatically and you have to just be careful not to delete your original files on your saved camera roll if you're still working on the project. So just to show you how to import the video, you would select new and then select the videos in the right order. So as an example, and I would select the green check mark. Okay. All right. So this is our timeline, as you can see. And the first thing you want to do is go to canvas and you have different aspect ratios. So you can choose uh, four by five for Instagram or one by one or nine by 16, but we're going to use 16 by nine because that's the standard ratio for film. And you also have the option to zoom in, which is really great if you want to change angles, for example, and you can also select different backgrounds. So if I would go back to ratio, for example, one by one, I can go to background and make the background either very blurry or I can choose a color, which is really awesome or shapes, patterns, but we're not going to use that for now. All right. So we're going to choose 16 by nine and select the check mark. So the next thing I would do is remove the in shot watermark. I select that and then remove this once. I do that for every project I create on, uh, on in shot and you can do that every time. So that's pretty cool. And if you don't want the ads to be displayed, you can just, for example, close uh, the InShot app and select flight mode and then select InShot again, video, and then our draft and it's gone. So you don't have to deal with that. Then you have music. You can choose tracks. Um, they have their own built in tracks. I personally have a paid subscription on Artlist and I just use music from them because I most of the time monetize my videos, but they also have a few selection here. Now, another great resource to get music from is YouTube audio library or no copyright music. Um, I actually have a dedicated video on that that you should check out. So I actually imported my own music from Artlist over AirDrop, which is really cool um, that I used for this video. But you can also uh, connect it over iTunes and you also have effects, uh, for example, weapons, instruments and all that stuff. And I actually used a couple of them for this video. For example, I used birds since the scene is taking place in the forest. You can also record your own voice if you wanted to, um, to create a voiceover, for example, but we're not going to need that. Now you also have the ability to add stickers. I don't use that. I usually add my own PNG pictures. Um, you can import them uh, from your camera roll, for example, and I'm going to show you how that can be an advantage uh, for your video. And then we have text. You can add your own text. All of the text you've seen in the video was added through here. And you can also create transitions. You can change the font of the text and so on. We will get to that in detail later. Then you also have the ability to add effects. Most of them uh, are paid, but I don't use them that often. 
and you also have filters. I actually paid for the cinema pack filter because I think it looks really nice. And you can also adjust the intensity. And you, if you want, you can also color grade or color correct your image using these tools right here. Pretty advanced for video application on the phone. And if you wanna apply all of the effects to all of the videos, you can click the double check mark for apply to all. And this is really useful and will save a lot of time. So we're gonna head back. Next thing is pre-cut. This is great for precise editing. So on a phone, it can get really hard to make precise cuts. And with the pre-cut, you're able to do uh, cuts, for example, to the beat or so. Uh, next, we have delete. Then we have volume, obviously, speed. And this is gonna be really useful because I'm gonna slow parts of the clips down to around 50% since everything was shot uh, in 60 frames per second. Now you can't apply this to all of the videos. Um, that's kind of a bummer. So you have to, if you want to slow down all of the videos, you have to do it by selecting each. So you can also duplicate your clip, rotate it, flip it, freeze it, reverse it, all useful tools uh, that I used for the video. Another great thing you have to know is if you accidentally deleted a clip, you can undo it by selecting the left arrow. As you can see, it reverses that. Now, if you want to see the video clip as a whole, just hold and tap outside of the timeline and you can see each shot taken. So this is really great uh, to reposition your clips however you like to. Now you can always add more clips by pressing the plus button and going to video photo. This way you can add more video clips uh, to it. For example, this one, but I'm just gonna delete this. All right, so I'm gonna open up my draft and this is how it looks like. As you can see, there's a watermark again. I'm gonna remove that by selecting remove this once. So I started off by uh, organizing the clips in the right order so that I could tell the story. And to do so, you can just press and hold on the timeline or outside of the timeline and then reorganize it the way you want it to. And what I also did is in canvas, I selected 16 by nine, which is the standard aspect ratio for movies. So I took this as the opening shot. As you can see, I added some cinematic letter bars to it, which is really awesome. This was also shot in slow motion, actually. So I slowed this down by 50% and the color grade is really awesome. I really like the LUT preset on this one. So if I select filter, I chose cinema one. This is how it looked like before and with the LUT applied. Looks really nice, right? Makes a huge difference. So in order to add a letterbox to your video, um, I actually downloaded a PNG letterbox from Google Images. You can just type in letterbox PNG, save the PNG letterbox to your camera roll, and then you can go on to sticker, select sticker again, and then choose from camera roll, and it will give you that PNG letterbox. PNG means a picture without the background, basically. And then you can adjust it this way, and there you have it. And then you can stretch it out all the way. As you can see, I've stretched it till the end so that it stays. And this is really a cool hack to give your video a cinematic feeling to it. As you can see, I also added a transition to it. The way to do this is to go to edit and select this part. So you have different transitions right here. And I chose this one because it looks really great. The next thing I'm gonna show you is how to add your titles. So we're gonna select text. And then as you can see, I have different titles over here. 
and you can just select. So you can edit the text by selecting the pen. As you can see, I can choose different fonts. Um, Bebas is my favorite. You can also choose the color of it and also transition. So I chose this as a fade in and fade out transition. And you can also select the duration of the fade in. And I think 0.7 would fit perfect. All right. And you can move it by holding on the text and then dragging it, which you can actually be really precise with it. So another thing I would like to show you is this transition right here. So in between clips, you can see this white box. You can select that and choose different transitions. My favorite transition for this would be this one. I really like this transition, particular for this scene because of the sun flare getting uh, brighter and brighter. With this transition, it fades into white. So this shot was actually upside down. So it looked like this and I just rotated it and that's it. So I actually have two similar shots, which is this one, me grabbing the camera and putting the camera back in. So this is actually a reverse shot I did. And I also cropped in because I don't want to have the same framing all the time. How I did that is I went to canvas and zoomed all the way in and you can also adjust the framing to your liking. So let me show you how to add sound effects. Just go to music. So as you can see, I have different sound effects. I have birds, I have walking on the leaves and I also have whoosh transitions. For example, where it fades into white, I added a whoosh transition. Below is the music track playing. And I also added a fade in to this music track. As you can see, you can select fade in and fade out. And usually the sound effects aren't too loud. I usually lower it to around 5%. To export this, you just press the upper right button and save it. And this will take a little while, but it's gonna be on your camera roll. And then you can use it for your social media. So as you can see, filming yourself and editing it on your iPhone is possible to create quality videos. Even though I personally prefer to edit my videos in Final Cut Pro X, it was still a great challenge for me to do. And this video application is actually pretty advanced for what you can do with it. That is why I highly recommend you go out, try shooting uh, videos of yourself and editing it with the video application InShot. Now I would love to see your videos and if you upload it on Instagram, make sure to tag me at Bennett Grazer. Now it does take practice shooting videos and the more you do it, the better you get at it. If you like this video, leave a thumbs up and let me know what you would like to see next on this channel. Subscribe to my channel so that I can keep creating these awesome videos for you guys. Now, if you want to dive deeper into mobile filmmaking, I got two videos right here that you can check out that will certainly help you improve your mobile filmmaking skills. Until then, I wish you all the best. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Take care guys.